good morning, Santa Clarita. Welcome in. Thank you so much for joining us. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. I am Matt Watson, and this is SCVI, and I lead school's Eye on the Valley. Our show, Eye on the Valley, is brought to you, as I said, by SCVI and I Lead Schools. Who are we? Well, we are a network of charter schools with campuses in Castaic, Agua Dulce, Lancaster. We've also got a fully accredited online school, yeah, TK through 12 online school. Yes, your first graders can do their full curriculum online, and no, they're not going to be stuck on the computer all day. Check it out for more details. We've also got a great homeschool program. We're ta- we'll talk more about that in hour number two today. But for more information about any of our schools, whether they're classroom-based, you know, eight to three, or our online school, our homeschool, whatever you need, whatever your kid needs, actually, check us out at iLeadSchools.org. iLeadSchools.org for more information on any of our schools and programs. So yeah, so we've got our eye on education here in Santa Clarita and across the nation. But like the show says, we like to keep our eye on the valley as well, bringing you everything that you need to know about what's what here in the valley. And, and, you know, we try to do it while bringing a smile to your face because... Face it, if I'm not making you giggle once in a while, then you're not going to stick around. And we need you to stick around. We've got a great show for you today. So so, so it's it's Friday. We're, we're sliding into a Super Bowl and Valentine's weekend. And uh, so, so strap on your fancy pants and let's go. Let's get to it. We've got a great show for you today. Really excited about today's show. I've got a couple of just amazing guests that are going to be joining me today. Coming up in just a minute, we've got Ariana Monge with Remo Drums. And are you a drummer? Do you do you drum or or do you know a drummer? See, I'm not a drummer, but you know my my oldest is is quite the drummer. Drummers are so cool. Um, well, Ariana from Remo Drums is here, and and you know even if you're not a drummer, she's got a drum for you for real. So 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 stick around and listen all about that. In hour number two, as I mentioned, we've got Karen Che with I Lead Exploration. Karen Che is absolutely awesome. Um, she's an EF. That's what we call our teachers. Fully credentialed. We call them something different because they the way they present education is different, unique, innovative, what our kids need. But she's an EF, and she's also our school's testing coordinator with our home study program. So uh, you've got to hear the great things happening at iLead Exploration. And yes, as we do, we'll wrap the show with fun and trivia with Big T. Mom makes me put my brother on because I'm not allowed to have nice things of my own, Ariana. So, uh, so yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have a little bit of fun with, uh, with the Super Bowl, and uh, it's, it's going to be a great show. So stick around. It'll be lots of fun, very informative, and hey, it's me. At least it'll be interesting, you know, kind of like a train wreck. So let's get into it. Our first guest this morning is Ariana Monge. Ariana is a, check this out, a board-certified music therapist with Remo Drums right here in town. She's a graduate of the music therapy program at Cal State Northridge, serving as the president of music ther- of the Music Therapy Association, excuse me, president of Music Therapy Association Northridge, and also, at the same time, while she's studying, sat on the student representative board for the California and Western Regional Music Therapy Associations. In the spring of 2019, she was presented the CSUN Music Therapy Student of the Year Award. Ms. Monke is skilled in program development and implementation of clinical music therapy. She's worked with people of all ages, abilities from birth to end of life. Her experience spans the medical, rehabilitative, psychiatric, early childhood development, geriatric, and memory care settings. She's also served individuals with developmental and multiple disabilities, traumatic brain injury, and has a particular expertise in mental health and wellness, and is Remo Drums Rhythm and Wellness Brand Manager and Director of Health Rhythms, a program we've actually worked with at, uh, at our schools, at iLead Schools. Ariana, welcome to Eye on the Valley. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you having me. So glad to have you. We're super excited. Gosh, we just love the whole, uh, the whole family at Remo. Um, uh, Remo Belly was uh, uh, quite generous to us, and, and as his uh, his his lovely wife Ami. Um, and so we're glad that you're you're able to join us. Y'all are doing well. Gosh, we're gonna get into it, but y'all do so much more than just make drums out at out at Remo. And and the fact that they even have a position for the amazing things that you do is is, is testament to that. So let's talk. Let's talk first about your background, right? Sure. So, so prior to working with Remo, um, you have a, a, a personal connection uh, to how you discovered music therapy. Can you share with our listeners how you came to turning your passions into a career? Because this really was the career that you prepared for, which right. most of us 
don't even know that that's a career. Yes. So what a blessing to be able to use what I went to school for every single day, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just start with that. But um, I can't tell the story without acknowledging my background and my culture. I come from a Filipino family um, and I grew up singing. Music has been a part of my life all throughout, right. but just as well, I come from grandparents who my grandmother was a nurse, my grandfather enlisted in the Navy at 22 years old. So I come from a family that's always been of service to others. Uh -huh. So it was always ingrained in me, yes, music, but yes, stay in service to others. And I found that music therapy was a career that aligned both of them. Um, and how I found out about the concept of music therapy as a career uh, actually starts with my mother and my brother. So my little brother at three years old was diagnosed um, with severe, moderate to severe hearing loss. And what we found is that with the use of hearing aids, he was able to have use his residual hearing to use spoken language. But what they find for kids, you know, with late language development is that music therapy helps them with their sound production and their, you know, recognizing speech. And so my mom comes home. I'm a junior in high school at this point. She goes, you need to look up this music therapy thing. <laughs> and if there's one thing that you absolutely have to do, you have to listen to mom. <laughs> right. Yeah. See, that's why I put my brother on the show. <laughs> exactly. And I, I looked up a, a video of, um, or I came across a video, a ABC special on Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords, who, if uh, you may recall, she was shot in the head. She survived. But in order to recover her speech and you know her language uh, and even her physical rehabilitation, they found that a music therapist was effective in being able to to bring that language back up to where she is now. Um, she was a congresswoman, a profound yeah. speaker, uh -huh. and to lose your ability to speak, mm -hmm. the detriment that that causes on the mind, body, and soul, you know, um, they found that, you know, you, you can try to use the word light, for example, um, but language is stored in the left part of the brain. And music, by singing, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Gabby couldn't say it, but she could sing it. And through music, wow. I was in tears by the, en the end of this video. You can wow. see I was so moved to see that music is so much more powerful than we even can think or imagine. The science is there. And basically after that, I just knew this is what I'm going to do with the rest of my life. And you are more than just a drummer. Boy, you can sing. Yeah, I'm a singer first, yes. <laughs> I, I was going to say, can you just do that again really quick? That was unbelievable. Anytime. <laughs> Engineer Matt, give me back my show. Yeah, so m music is fascinatingly powerful. Uh, um, and I love that, well, I say we as a collective society, but you and those like you have tapped into that, that power of music mm -hmm. to, to heal folks, to, to grow folks, to tap into things that are otherwise uh, unaccessible. That, that's absolutely beautiful. So let's talk about how you do that and, and, and what you do. Can you tell our listeners what your role is at Remo? Because we were chatting about it a little bit before the show and you've got, we've got kind of lots of roles. You, you called it wearing multiple hats, but yes. it's just... It, I'm sure they're just completely exploiting the many talents you have. <laughs> I wouldn't say exploiting. Okay. I think encouraging. <laughs> Taking um, advantage of. There we go. <laughs> it's beautiful at Remo because they're, they're the yes man of drumming and rhythm you know it's not just rock and roll where we came from you know you think of Remo drums you think of records dating back to the Beatles right right and yeah. then as modern day as Questlove yeah yeah <laughs> so that that reach of Remo um, is beautiful and what Remo did is Remo the man and and now his wife Ami Belly mm -hmm. saw that there's a potential for drumming and rhythm that reaches beyond just the records that we hear on the radio and everywhere we go, it's actually a tool for education, for healing, for therapy. So what I get to do in my role is educate and advocate for mm -hmm. the use of rhythm. And as well as my expertise in music therapy, I get to take this to places like hospitals mm -hmm. and education systems and rehabilitative centers, homeless shelters, where we can demonstrate the effectiveness of the experience of drumming. Yeah. Yeah, at I Lead Schools, we're very familiar with uh, with Remo and his story, and, and every time I share it, people say, wait, 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 Remo was a guy? 
Yeah, he, the he was man living a, a, and breathing. <laughs> a genius and, and extremely innovative back in the '60s, um, creating new styles of drum skins that were more resilient, able to travel, um, didn't need to be tuned as often, and uh, and just from launching his career, continue to stretch the limits of what drums can do, both physically and, as you said, socially, emotionally, medically, uh, and it's uh, just beautiful how Remo has. Remo the man and Remo the organization have just continued to push the envelope uh, about what something as simple as, as as beating on a drum can do and, and not just drums for drummers, right? Exactly. Drums for everybody. So your roles evolved quite a bit as as uh, you work together with the Remo Drum Company mm-hmm. to create the most effective use of drums for wellness. Uh, how has uh, Remo's widow, Ami, Ami Belly, supported the growth of your role with the company? Well, first of all, Dr. Ami Belly. Excuse me. I didn't realize she was a doctor. Yes. She's always just so unassuming and sweet and <laughs> and the like the opposite of pretentious. <laughs> well, yeah. A doctor. Yeah, I did not know that. <laughs> Dr. Ami Belli has been a huge advocate for music therapy in particular. And this dates back to, you know, decades ago when Remo used to tote Ami to all of the music conventions, uh-huh. you know. Um, and she would likewise bring Mr. Belly to her doctor conventions. Okay. And they found themselves at the music therapy conference down in my hometown of San Diego um, in the 90s. And that was where they witnessed the use of their instruments, their tools for, you know, benefiting people of all disabilities, um, particularly within, we see it within the autism Mm -hmm. community. Okay. Um, And I think that was really what catalyzed where we are now as a company, moving forward very strongly with the mission of using drums for wellness. So Dr. Ami Belli has been an amazing woman to have in my corner as a music therapist, but also as the manager of Rhythm and Wellness. Yeah. Because we're able to bring these programs um, not only to this community, but to the world at large. That is so beautiful. And and we've seen it. I, I mentioned earlier that... Uh, that, that Remo has been so generous to us at I Lead Schools, donating drums and then spending time with our students. Um, and, and so we've seen the power of, of rhythm and, and drumming uh, with all of our students, with our staff. Uh, y'all, this is years ago before you were with them, but y'all came out and, and led a drum circle at one of our staff retreats. And, mm-hmm. and we just saw the power of, of inspiring educators, uh, of developing a stronger sense of wellness and, and control with our learners. It's just been absolutely beautiful. You and your career obviously go so much deeper with the power of music. How, well, why is it, do you think, that, that music is so instrumental in, in wellness? instrumental did you did you see what i did there? i see what you did there yeah. but um, tsh, i didn't bring my drum with me <laughs> to the station there we go a little rim <laughs> shot but but so why do you think you know this taps into some things that uh that many other therapies aren't able to to access right so this goes back to the gabrielle gifford story yeah um, music what we found unlike other forms of therapy such as you know let's just take speech therapy okay it, engages both sides of the brain. So what the science and evidence tells us, what uh, neuroscientists have been able to find, is this concept of neuroplasticity. In essence, music allows us to rewire the brain in places that it might have been injured, you know, by traumatic brain injury, for example. Um, But even with our aging, um, it allows us to rewire the brain to keep those connections going and engage both sides of the brain so that way we can you know live our best quality life that is fascinating we're talking this morning with ariana monje rhythm and wellness brand manager and director of healthy rhythms with remo drums in valencia that's right one of the world's premier drum manufacturers is located right here in valencia but they do as we're talking they do so much more than make drums as, as ariana is explaining to us ariana when we get back from break i want to talk about what kind of programming specifically you provide to the folks that you care for folks that you work with uh, for drummers and like i said non-drummers alike i am matt watson you're listening to scbi and i lead schools right here on eye on the valley on your hometown station khts 
Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is Matt Watson, and you are listening to SCVI and I Lead School's Eye on the Valley, the show that puts the bass in your morning. I'm joined this morning uh, by... Ariana Monge with Remo Drums, and she was talking about just the absolutely uh, amazing things that she's accomplishing uh, with uh, some incredible populations, just all different kinds of groups, through the power of rhythm and and drumming. So we, we kind of talked about generalities, we talked about the science of it, and, and how powerful music and rhythm can be, but can you tell us about kind of the specific programming that you do provide? Yeah, absolutely. So at Remo Drums, predating my time um, as manager of Rhythm Wellness and now director of Health Rhythms, um, Health Rhythms is a science and evidence-based protocol that uses group drumming. And the evidence has shown us that not only do we get these feel-good you know, benefits, but on a biological level, we're increasing our immunity. Um, we oh. can see that the, the killer T cells are increased in the body. Get out. Right. So we're actually increasing our physical immunity by through drumming. drumming. By drumming That's and crazy. connecting with others in community. So it's not just an individual thing. Of course, there's individual benefits to participating in music. Okay. But we found that specifically the act of drumming in a group using the drum not just as a musical instrument, but as a tool for communication, for expression, um, as well as physical wellness. That's amazing. That explains why Tommy Lee's lived so long. <laughs> so oh, Health Rhythms is the program <laughs> that, that now I am the director of. So what we do at Remo is not only do we share this protocol with others, but it's a training program. So we're able to train others who are interested in taking this protocol to their communities, to their wellness centers, to their hospitals, and they can use our protocol to benefit the people in their community. So that's actually something that we've really taken advantage of because, yeah, Remo's donated, well, I want to say tongue-in-cheek, a few drums. It's much more than a few drums (laughs) to SCVI and and several of our iLead schools. Um, But... Y'all also trained a couple of our, we call them facilitators, a couple of our teachers, um, one of our special educators, uh, to do exactly that. And they've brought those programs into our schools, and they they remain there. And it's, it's, even today, accomplishing amazing things. They're keeping the beat going. Uh, Yeah. And that's exactly what Remo would have wanted. I love it. (laughs) So even though most people talk about wellness practices being for those who may have specialized needs. You've talked about, uh, you know, folks with traumatic brain injury or, or, or folks on the autism spectrum, things like that. Um, uh, people struggling with addiction or mental health. You also provide wellness programming for caregivers, right? Those who are, are providing the care to those populations. Teachers and medical professionals have been through the ringer the last few years, right. you know, with the pandemic. Gosh, we've seen so many teachers leave the profession just because they're exhausted and, and, and burnt out. Can you can you talk to us about that? Can you tell us um, how you're helping to boost and, and improve the wellness of those who are taking care of others as well? Absolutely. So what we found with health rhythms is not only does it benefit people who are struggling with stress and immunity, but really we're finding that there isn't a person alive who doesn't need some form of health and wellness or care and support, and Mm -hmm. particularly our caregivers, um, because burnout is very real. One Mm -hmm. of the uh, studies that was done with health rhythms, one of the foundational research studies, um, actually took a look at the turnover rate for caregivers Mm -hmm. in, um, you know, high demand facilities such as um, older adult homes, you know, that need round the clock Mm -hmm. care. Mm -hmm. Um, And they found with group drumming, um, we're able to increase the retention rate of employees because they're building that connection not only with their coworkers mm-hmm. but with their peers and the place that they're at. Mm-hmm. Um, so just really reaffirming, you know, the caregivers in who they are, what their purpose is, and the and what they provide. Because uh, oftentimes these caregivers are the ones that spend the most time with these yeah. patients. Um, and really just reaffirming that their wellness comes first. As, as a therapist myself, uh, it's a phrase that we use a lot in the therapy community. You have to keep your cup filled. You have to fill right. your cup because you cannot serve from mm-hmm. an empty cup. 
Mm-hmm. So it's just reaffirming that, you know, you got to take care of yourself first. Put your mask on first because mm-hmm. you cannot be your best self. You cannot serve others without being your best self. You're absolutely right. And, you know, we've known this and we've said it for years, right? That, that you know, you need to fill your, your cup first so that you can then, uh, you know, administer to others but, but we're really starting to realize it as folks' cups are empty and they're just, you know, they're going back to the well and saying there's nothing left right. and walking away from from very successful careers just because they don't have any more to give. And there's been such a huge focus on self-care right. recently. And this, uh, this wellness program through rhythm, through drumming, is one of the most effective ways. I see it almost like... Um, Gosh, for you computer nerds out there, kind of defragmenting your hard disk, right? Mm-hmm. You, you get, you know, the day just just gets all this gunk on you. You get frazzled. You're pulled in so many different directions, especially if you're a caregiver or have other things going on in your life that uh, that can be difficult. And, and drumming is just an amazing way of it's a maintenance, resetting and music. Yes, and and uh, you know, a pun, yes, but getting <laughs> yourself literally back into the rhythm. Mm-hmm. And, and ready to go. It's yeah, music to, to rejuvenate and to reset mm-hmm. the nervous system, the mind, the body, um, so that you can move forward. So we've talked about clients that you work with that have physical and, 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 and mental health needs that are being met through rhythm and, and, and wellness. Um, we talked about caregivers. So uh, is, there, um, is there any experience level? Is there any... Um, you know, who can get involved in the programs that you run? Is this for an exclusive group of folks or, you know, can anybody get involved? Absolutely. I, I like to say that with music therapists and we see a lot of drum circle facilitators, mm-hmm. you know, who are called to this work, um, here in the U.S. alone, the need and demand for music and arts-based services is far greater than any of us combined. So we need people with the hearts to do this in our program, learning how to share this with the, yeah. the, the world at large. So to answer your question, Matt, um, we see a lot of music therapists. We see a lot of um, drum circle facilitators, yes. But we also see medical professionals. We see counselors, social workers, teachers, as you uh-huh. said, yeah. even doctors, because they're starting to see the value in this experience for increasing the quality of life for their patients, mm-hmm. for their students, for the people that they serve every day. Yeah, there's gosh, there's just so many connections and and yeah, I, I think it's good for anyone. I've got zero musical training, but I remember when um, when y'all came out and, and worked with us and worked with us closely, not just at our, our weekend retreat, but mm-hmm. throughout the course of a school year. And, and it really was so centering and and so incredibly helpful for myself and, and a lot of others in our, our organization. Our kids, like I said, are doing it every day and just absolutely love it. I know during the pandemic, um, you all at Remo and in your program um, did an amazing thing like like a few people did out there. Didn't say, oh, can we still do this? But how can we still do this? Right. Love the open-mindedness, uh, the growth mindset of that. Um, and y'all developed online drumming programs That's to right. continue to therapy, to continue your work during the pandemic. Are, are y'all still doing online drum circles, and how does that work? Yes, I must shout out my amazing colleague, Mike Domeno, because he's been keeping the recreational music at Remo going for the past almost 20 years. So thank you, Mike Domeno. Um, he really did a lot to set the foundation for this, and he was the one that kept the online drum circles mm-hmm. going, um, not only twice a week, but now we even have... Um, our European drum circle that happens on a monthly basis. Cool. So Tuesday, Thursdays, we have our Pacific Coast and our East Coast drum circles online that bring together the community all across the world. Um, cool. And they're still happening every every Tuesday, Thursday. <laughs> that is so cool. You know, uh, the pandemic was such a limitation on so many things, but it also opened up the possibility to so many things that were always there. We It just took a pandemic to get us to, right. to understand them. And, and so y'all took your drum circle from inside an auditorium to across the world all at the same time. That's cool. Right, right. Well, yeah, what we see is that, you know, with the pandemic and everyone having to be isolated, that we didn't have to accept that isolation right. as a finality. In fact, we took what people perceive to be this obstacle of not being able to connect. And we said, hey, turn your camera on, grab a book, grab your table, grab some pencils. If you have a drum, grab that too, you know, and let's get connected and let's 
stay in touch through the rhythm. Absolutely. Otherwise, just grab that jug of oatmeal and bang on that. That's yeah. great. So <laughs> Remo also has a, a recreational music center. It's actually right across the street from our founding campus, SCBI. Right. Love how close y'all are. Um, can you tell our listeners about uh, the recreational music center at Remo Drums? Yeah, absolutely. So when we moved up to Valencia, um, the, the Remo Music Center, it was able to, pre-COVID, um, welcome all sorts of people, uh, such as, you know, schools, they would come and do their field trips. Um, uh-huh. We would host health rhythms trainings and drum circle facilitator trainings. And then, of course, there's the weekly drum circles. We have our Saturday drum circles that are specifically for kids and their families. Oh, fun. Yes. And then um, we just recently brought back... Um, our Tuesday night drum circle. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so you've got Tuesday night drum circles. You've got uh, uh, children kids. and family yeah. uh, for, for, for kids. So talk to me about that. Um, how can rhythm and wellness help kids, right? If I'm thinking, well, m- well, my kid's not on the autism spectrum or doesn't have traumatic brain injury, how yeah, can that absolutely. help all kids? Well, yeah, we, we see that ki- that music enriches all of our lives. Um, just going back to music as a presence in a kid's life in an educational setting, we see that it it improves performance. And so what we're seeing with specifically group drumming and the activities that we do at Remo is that it increases attention span. Um, And then through the interaction, you know, you're working on communication, you're working on a lot of social emotional skills that kids need and you know even the big kids right. need <laughs> and that music accomplishes all of those goals in a really fun and engaging way that they're not thinking about oh I'm listening to my peer or I'm working out you know uh, uh, maybe I'm interacting with somebody that I wouldn't normally interact with right. and now we're creating a connection that's a, that's amazing you know it's funny you know old guys like me talk all the time about how you know kids don't have an, any attention span anymore and and even if it's but something that can of help us? develop that. <laughs> right. I'm sorry. What were you saying? <laughs> so, gosh, this sounds amazing. You have all these different programs. How can listeners learn more about how to attend a drum circle at, at the RMC or, or any of the programming that you offer? Yeah, absolutely. So if you head to our website, remo.com, um, or you can just head to rhythmwellnessu.com, um, you can find updates on our programming, all of the good things that we're up to. But if you're on the social medias, on Facebook, um, it's just Rhythm Wellness U. Um, we have the Remo Music Center. And then on Instagram, um, it's also Rhythm Wellness and U. It's so Wellness Y-O-U, U. RhythmWellnessU.com. R-W-I. Yeah, uh, all right. Exactly. Very cool. Very cool. All right, Ariana, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask. It's the big weekend this weekend. We've Absolutely. got the Super Bowl coming up. Are, are, <laughs> I don't know if you're a sports fan, but... I'm a Rihanna fan. Uh, oh, are, yeah, there's a Rihanna concert, and there's right, going to be a, a football Rihanna game in the middle of it. Rihanna concert being bookended by a couple of guys yeah. running into each other. <laughs> Fantastic. So you got plans for the Super Bowl? You're going to throw a big party at your place? Uh, I mean, not a big party, but, you know, we might drum a little. <laughs> oh, okay, very cool. Break out the drums, but you're looking forward to Rihanna. She's uh, she's about to put together, yeah, an amazing show, I'm sure. Yes, Fantastic. Absolutely. We're just going to put in that work. So, but let's talk about those bookends. Do, do you have a team, Chiefs fan, Eagles fan, who you got? Oh, man. Putting me on the spot. Here. I am. I am. Um, well, I, I'm i a San Diego girl th- through and through. Uh, okay. So now now they're the Los Angeles Chargers. They're not at the Super Bowl, but, you know, I'm, I have some friends that are from Philly, so I'm going to be rooting for the Eagles. Hey, co- station co-owner uh, Carl Goldman is, is also a big Eagles guy. So, yeah, I'm with you. I think I'm pulling for, <laughs> for the Eagles. And do you have a, a – <laughs> oh, We got thumbs down over there. <laughs> so do you have a go-to dish for your Super Bowl party? Is it you, you – the I'm nachos? chips and dip girl. Chips and dip. <laughs> you, you know, dipping is, is, is real popular. Some salsa. Okay. Oh, perfect. Perfect little <laughs> chips and salsa. Maybe a spinach artichoke. <laughs> oh, spinach artichoke dip is good. All right. Very cool. Ariana Monge is the Rhythm and Wellness brand manager for Remo Drums right here in Valencia, doing a lot of great things to help people, uh, people of all ages, all experiences. Uh, again, uh, check out their programming at, let me see if I can remember it, rhythmwellnessu.com. Yeah. Fantastic. rhythmwellnessu.com and see how you and, and your kids can can get involved in a, in a little drumming to, to help improve the quality of your life, get you all centered. Ariana, thank you so much for your time. You have a great weekend. 
Thank you, Matt. Well, we're going to be talking about uh, Ariana's Super Bowl. We just talked about Ariana's Super Bowl plans. We're going to be talking about your Super Bowl plans and mine when we get back. I am Matt Watson. You're listening to SCVI and I Lead Schools Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is Matt Watson, your host, and you are listening to SCVI and I Lead Schools Eye on the Valley. Just had a great visit with Ariana Monke with Remo Drums, and uh, she was talking about some amazing wellness programs that she's putting together for uh, for folks with with all kinds of issues and folks, just regular folks like you and I. Uh, drums can bring a tremendous amount of, of wellness to our lives. She talked about drum circles that they lead on Tuesday nights. She wanted to clarify that that is the first and third Tuesday of the month. Not every Tuesday night, so uh, but the first and third Tuesday of every month out there at Remo Drums in Valencia. Yeah, um, you know, Ariane also shared her Super Bowl plans with us. And, and what about you? What are your Super Bowl plans? Uh, what about you, Engineer Matt? You you got big plans for the big game? Uh, you know what? Probably gonna go over to a buddy's house, watch with all of my friends, and uh, hope that the Eagles lose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't let Carl hear you say that, man. I uh, know. I know. <laughs> well, I love Carl. I love Jerry here, and I know they're Eagles fans. But yep. uh, as a native New Yorker, I cannot like anything. For the uh, okay, world. right? You, you, yeah. Except you gotta... except their soft pretzels and their Philly cheesesteaks. <laughs> All right, all right. You will cross the line for a pretzel. I, I, I got it. So, you know, I always love the fun facts surrounding the day. You know, Super Bowl Sunday is the day when just the entire country just goes full college freshman. The, the gloves come off, and we all just indulge like no other day. Well, Big T pointed out last week, like no other day except for Thanksgiving Day. We actually eat more on Thanksgiving, but I think I think we eat and drink and 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 do dumb stuff more on Super Bowl Sunday than than any other day. For example, on Super Bowl Sunday, one in seven Americans. That's quite a bit, because because you think not everybody's watching the game. One in seven Americans order takeout on Super Bowl Sunday, so you don't have to cook. And, and 60% of those takeout orders are for pizza. So, yeah, really good idea. You don't have to cook. Order pizza. Everybody loves pizza. But 60% of, of, of one in seven Americans, I can't do the math on that. But that's a lot of people. If you're planning on calling Domino's, you should probably call them now. So, yeah, um, it, it's you're not going to get a hold of them after about noon on Sunday. Um, this Sunday, 1.25 billion with a B chicken wings will be eaten. 1.2 billion chicken wings. Yeah, that's a lot of teeny tiny chickens walking around with no wings out there. Uh, 10% of Americans will use their grills. They'll, they'll use their grills on Sunday. Um, so yeah, 10% of us, one in 10, will be using our grills. 325.5 million gallons of beer are consumed. About half of that at my place. Um... <laughs> Let's see, what else? Uh, over half of Americans who eat chicken wings prefer to dip their wings in ranch dressing. Me too. I love ranch dressing. I love chicken wings. But I just love chicken wings. I don't need to dip them no, in anything. No, no blue cheese? No, no, really? no. Just, just eat the wing right off the bone, man. Okay. Um, now, sausage is the third most popular pizza topping. Obviously, pepperoni is, is, is the first. I don't know what the second is, but you know what? If you're putting fruit on your pizza, just get it out of here. <laughs> just don't do it. Um, let's see. The most popular dippable snack are, are veggies, believe it or not. Folks lie to themselves and think they're being healthy by dipping that celery stick in a huge tub of ranch. Um, but the uh, let's see. Oh, no, no, no. They are the second most popular. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Just like Ariana said, chips are the most popular Dippable. About 11.2 million pounds of potato chips are going to be dunked on the su- on Super Bowl Sunday. 8.2 million pounds of tortilla chips. 4 million pounds of pretzels may also be dipped as well. Let's see, what do we got? 32% of Americans say they plan on eating some form of dip, including 8 million pounds of my go-to guacamole. That is a lot of avocado. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, the week in the Super Bowl is the second biggest grilling week of the year. We heard uh, after the 4th of July, of course, nearly 14 billion burgers. 14 billion burgers will be grilled up and served for the big game. When you think about it, there's only, what, 350 million Americans? Not even half of us are going to be watching the game, but we're going to eat 14 billion burgers? 
That's like what nine burgers per person, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I think we, we it speaks to our nation, doesn't it? <laughs> it really does. Well, you know what? I'm out there doing my part because I'm a patriotic American. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, so, <laughs> In 2014, during the the 2014 Super Bowl, over 40,000 sausages and hot dogs were served to hungry fans at the game alone. Wow. 40,000 sausages and hot dogs served at the game, which is pretty surprising considering the Chicago Bears weren't even playing in the game. Uh, I was going to say, was that only in Wisconsin, Chicago? No, that was at uh... the game. That was at the game. And I think Denver and the Seattle Seahawks were playing. So pretty surprising when you got two places that aren't used to ordering that many brats, if you know what I mean. Um, Let's see. Once game day comes to an end, (laughs) you know what increases in sales. That's right. Antacid. Antacid sales increase about 20% the Monday following Super Bowl Sunday. About 1.5 million Americans will call in sick to work on Monday. About 1.5 million Americans. That's crazy. So snack wisely, my friends. Uh, Here's a few non-food related facts. Um, This year's game features the Kansas City Chiefs versus the uh, Philadelphia Eagles, as, as we've mentioned. The Kansas City Chiefs were the first professional football team to ever <laughs> lose a Super Bowl. Uh, that's right. That's right. They lost Super Bowl one to the Green Bay Packers. True story. So, uh, so Carl, here's hoping that they repeat, right? Um, so here's one. I'll put it in the form of a trivia question for you, Matt. Sure. Um, which university has produced the most Super Bowl quarterbacks? Ooh, that's a good one. Okay. Let me really quick let it ruminate in my head here. Um, I know it's not Alabama. And I, nope. I know it's not them because we have uh, Joe Namath. That's the only one, I believe, actually, or the, la- the most recent, which is 1969. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go with Oklahoma? Not Oklahoma. Hmm. Cal, right here in California, uh, University of California, founded in 1868 and located in Berkeley, has produced more Super Bowl quarterbacks than any other university. Um, Ariana talked about how she's uh, she's waiting for the, the Super Bowl halftime show. It, it attracts some of the biggest artists in the world. Um, have you got a favorite? Favorite I, halftime? I know there's one correct answer and only one, but what's your favorite halftime show? Well, I think we may be on the same page here. You two? So maybe top right. five. Okay. Last year's was great. Yeah, with it was very good. Snoop yeah, Dog, Snoop Dogg, Dogg, Dogg. All, all the, the legendary rap artists, and, and they put on a phenomenal show. They did. But I'm sorry. You can't beat Purple Rain in the rain. Aww. Prince put on an amazing show in a torrential downpour. This year's going to be great. Um, Ariana Monke from Remo Drums talked about how she's looking forward to Rihanna taking the stage this year. Matt, did you know the NFL – does not pay one red cent for their Super Bowl halftime shows. You know, it's funny you ask that because I didn't know that until recently, maybe two yeah. years ago. Prior to that, I thought these people are getting compensated out the wazoo. But no, it's yeah. really a uh, way of propping up their new music or old music. You're absolutely right. It's- and Dr. Dre actually put in about a million and a half dollars to pay for the staging and and all the the pyrotechnics and things like that for his show last year so it actually cost them quite a bit of money um but yeah it's obviously a great show piece uh, for the artist but yeah they don't get paid a dime so, so basically what you're saying is that if you and i got the funding together we could potentially host the next halftime show yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, if we got the money. <laughs> well, we well, you don't you don't buy it. Dr. Dre spent that much money just like just on the staging good. and things like that. So they they have to choose you. Right. Well, we right? Ha- we'd so, have to have a very good blueprint. We're course. gonna have to get in Studio B after the show right. and 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 kind of drop a line or two. Yeah, yeah, do a little bit of rehearsing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if we can spit some lyrics after the show and get in uh, Super Bowl uh, uh, next year. Let's see. Um, Now, where the Super Bowl is, um, it's traditionally held in stadiums that obviously you don't want snow and weather to be a factor in the biggest game of the year. So traditionally, they are held in stadiums that have an average climate of 50 degrees or higher, unless, of course, we can find, you know, a cold weather town that's got a dome or a retractable roof. So they they try to make sure that snow is not an issue. I don't get the math on this one, but... Each team competing for the Super Bowl gets 108 footballs each, right? So the Chiefs have 108 Super Bowl footballs. uh, The Eagles have 108. And they get 54 for practice and 54 for the game. On average, in the Super Bowl, 120 footballs are used. 
I'm doing the math. Each team has 54. That's only 108. I don't know where they're getting the other 12 balls from. Let's see. Let me scroll through these. There's a, there's a lot of them. Um, 12 teams have never won a Super Bowl, and only four have never even been to the Super Bowl. <laughs> Browns, Lions, I'm looking at you. Uh, last year, in, in Super Bowl 2022, uh, you know, our local Rams beat the Cincinnati Bengals. It was viewed by almost 30% of the people in the United States, which is equal to around 100 million people. Um, let's see, that one's not so... Did you know that each player on the winning team will receive about $130,000 in bonus money? Wow. So besides that amazing Super Bowl ring, you're going to get a $130,000 bonus. Losing team, don't feel too bad for them. They get about half of that, about 65, uh, 65 grand. Um, and, and finally, I've been told that the calories that you consume on Super Bowl Sunday don't count, so eat up. That is true. But I am being told that the things that you say on Super Bowl Sunday do count, so you might want to watch what you drink. Hey, enjoy the game, everybody. Go Eagles. I am Matt Watson. You're listening to SCVI and I Lead Schools on Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is Matt Watson, your host, and you are listening to SCVI and I Lead School's Eye on the Valley. That's right. Our show, Eye on the Valley, is coming to you live from the center of Main Street here in beautiful downtown Newhall. And I'm joined now by Karen Che with I Lead Exploration, I Lead's innovative home study program. Born and raised right here in Southern California, Karen comes from a family full of educators, so it's in her blood, you could say. After receiving her undergraduate degree at UCLA, go Bruins, Karen attended Cal State Fullerton, where she received her teaching credential, as well as a master's in educational curriculum and instruction. And after working as a classroom teacher for a few years, she left the classroom to be a stay-at-home mom. During her time at home, Karen kept her love for teaching afloat through tutoring, teaching homeschool classes, and working with children in other capacities. And as a part of the iLead team now, Karen loves working with families to bring the best in education to them by helping them be the best home educators that they can be. Karen's been married since 2006 to her lovely husband, David, and her best friend, who is also an educator. She has three wonderfully unique and beautiful children and resides right here in Awesome Town. Karen, welcome to Eye on the Valley. Thank you for having me, Matt. Well, absolutely. So, first of all, Karen, um, anytime I introduce a guest who who attended UCLA as a UCLA grad, I will insert Go Bruins, but Go Bruins. I actually didn't have to today. It actually says that on your bio, on the school website. Always. I love it. Always. I love it. Go Bruins. And and speaking of, how about them Bruins beating Oregon State by 15 last night in men's basketball? Did you catch the game? Well, we always try to catch the, the recap in the sports center after, but we're always watching everything, all Bruins, all the time. Oh, yeah. You know, our senior stars were a little bit quiet last night, but a freshman, Amari <laughs> Bailey of Sierra Canyon, right here in SoCal, had 24 points in just 26 minutes. The kid was on fire. Yep. He was on fire. They're going to make a run in the uh, in the tournament this year. But but we're not here to talk college sports. We are here to talk about <laughs> the most incredible, supportive, and innovative homeschool program you've ever heard of. And, and Karen, I know it's funny. I, I see it at my barbecues. I'm going to see it at, a, at my Super Bowl party this weekend. Anytime I mention homeschool, you know, there's going to be a good chunk of parents that, that just tune me out right away. And they say, I, I could never. I, I couldn't. My kid wants me to, but I couldn't. But with I Lead Exploration, that's not the case. Yes, you can. We'll get into this. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the program, Karen. So how did you yeah. come How did you come to, to work with us? I, I mentioned in your bio that uh, that you were a, a, a mom who, who stayed connected and, and, and had left the classroom. But uh, when you were ready to go back to work, what made you uh, decide on I Lead Exploration? Yeah, so... It kind of just fell into my lap, like all those things that you said about me in terms of working in the classroom, staying home. Um, I was actually still working in some capacity in education, whether it was individually with families or um, tutoring kids. But I actually was working at a learning center up here in Santa Clarita okay. um, where I met a lovely lady who was part of I Lead Exploration. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of how I got connected to the program or where I first heard about it. And then there just happened to be some openings, and I started as an EM, um, 
EF for a couple of years, really got to know the program as an EF and a teacher, um, kind of moved up a little bit uh, working with students in our internal assessments, our math testing. And now this year, I have the title of being the data testing coordinator. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. um, can I ask you to explain the acronym a little bit? You know, in education, we love our acronyms, boy. I think it's our secret oh, yeah. code so that we can keep others on the outside. But what is an EF and, and, and why do we call our educators that? So an EF stands for educational facilitator. Um, I think traditionally when you think about a teacher, a classroom teacher, you think about somebody who's leading a room of learners or a room of students, right, throughout the day for those six hours and kind of teaching the kids in that capacity. But since our program is an independent study homeschool, home study program, we call our teachers educational facilitators because we work collaboratively, collaboratively, excuse me, collaboratively <laughs> with families um, to not just, it's not like a classroom experience, it's a home experience. So we're not exactly teachers in the traditional sense, but we facilitate the education in the home with the families and the learners. That's kind of where it stems from. Yeah, it, and it's a, a unique term for a, a unique program. So, so tell us a little bit more about what makes iLead Exploration unique in the homeschooling space. What kind of differenti differentiates you guys? Yeah, so iLead Exploration... There's a lot of things, I think, that make our program unique, actually. Um, there are a lot of home study programs out there, um, but ours particularly has a specific, I would say, goal, has a specific um, desire and outcome that we want for our learners. And a large part of that is um, personalized education. Um, you know, home study in general, uh, we... Because it's not a traditional classroom, like I said, we try to tailor all of our learning, um, try to tailor all of our uh, experiences, educational experiences, based on what best suits the learner. So it's really, really collaborative. It's the EF working with the parents and the students to figure out what's going to draw the best educational experience out for each learner. I think that's really unique for our what goes on in education because a lot of the times it's, you're trying to fit learners into certain standards, but we're trying to make the whole entire experience for the learner and not just the learner, their family, yeah. whoever's involved in their education, be positive, um, show growth academically, and just uh, be really holistic and enriching all of the child. And so another thing I think, too, is like we're very project-based. You know, mm -hmm. we like to incorporate large learning experiences, I would like to say, um, versus um, just meeting certain standards and goals. We like to bring new opportunities to learners that maybe they wouldn't have thought of based on these projects. We'd like to encourage all learners um, and EFs to work with interest. So like if there's interest that a learner has for science, we encourage learners to follow that interest and uh, learn through those interests. Um, it sounds very non-traditional, uh -huh. I think, but I think the non-traditional part, non part of it makes it unique in the sense that we're able to see academic growth in each learner through these non-traditional things and in that sense that it works, you know? And, like, we love our learners who think outside the box. We love our learners who love to be challenged. Uh, we love our learners who need a little extra support and, like, we try to problem solve and figure out what works best for them. All those things really, I think, make our program unique and work for all families. Absolutely, and that's why I tell folks that uh... – you know, that would say, oh, no, no, not for me, not for my family. Hold on. The level of support that y'all provide is absolutely incredible. But uh, but it's a, a spectrum, right? Because you've yeah. got those seasoned homeschool families that have been doing this for years. And then you've got other families who are like, uh, pandemic hit. My kid went home and, and he actually did uh -huh. really well. But I don't know. Yeah. Can you talk to that, that, that idea about as an EF? how you support as much as the family needs or as little as the family needs. Yeah, so it's, it's definitely a dialogue. It's definitely a relationship. That's the main word we like to use in terms of our relationship is um, everything is based around the relationship between the EF and the learners and the learner's family. And so that communication goes on all the time, and it's really what does the family need? Mm -hmm. Do they need a lot of support? We're going to give it to them. Do they need a little bit less support? Then we'll give them the space. Uh, I think having that relationship, that open communication, being able to talk, being able to see learners, being able to 
have the availability and opportunity to communicate all those things is really key to making a, a positive experience for everybody, but also reaching all those goals and making sure the learner is getting what they need when they need it. Um, it, it and it allows the EF to be available for whatever needs that the learner and the family may have. Yeah, it really is the perfect space for personalized learners. I hear families from from every level of experience say, wow, this really was just the perfect program for me and my family because I just need to come in and choose my curriculum and be supported and, and, and carry this forward versus someone else who would say, I had no idea what I was doing and they helped me with everything and everywhere in between. So let's talk, yeah, Karen. Yeah, I mean, we really try. We really try to... To meet everybody where they are. I yeah. think that's like a really big uh, opportunity for us to serve our community in that way. And I think that's a it's something that we really love doing as EF, right? It's yeah. getting to know our families and meeting them and understanding their needs. And it's so important because every kid is different. Every family is different. And so, of course, yeah. the level of, of care that you give them needs to be different. So let's talk about your role, Karen, as, as the, you're an EF, as you mentioned, and you support your, your families and your learners, but you're also the testing coordinator for all of iLead Exploration, which is a lot. Mm-hmm. So tell us about sure. your role. Uh, what is it that you do besides supporting your families? So I do support families. I have a roster of learners that I love to meet every month. Um, on top of that, uh, the, the official, I guess, official role title that I have is data and testing coordinator. Oh, that's and cool. what that means is, uh, I oversee all the internal testing that we do in our program, as well as some of the external testing that we do. So what is internal testing? Internal testing is the test that we, assessments that we give to all our learners, TK through 12, um, to track their growth academically. And then the external st- uh, assessments, what does that mean? It's like the tests that we're mandated to give our learners, like through the state, like through the, whether that be the state testing or the physical fitness testing, the LPAC, all those things. Fantastic. So um, I mentioned that it's a lot. Well, because you're mm-hmm. testing, internal testing, external testing, a lot of learners. How many learners do you manage for testing? It's over 3,000. It's our entire population, learner population. So it's it's a lot of learners, TK through 12. Yeah, TK through 12. And so when I say that uh, that we've got a burgeoning homeschool program, we really do. Like you said, about yeah. 3,600 learners across Southern California because you don't just serve here in Santa Clarita, which we do. We've got a no. lot of families here in Santa Clarita, but it's all across L.A. County and every other adjacent county. So we've got families in Kern County, Ventura County, San Bernardino, Orange County. Um, so, so, And you're helping coordinate these internal and external assessments for, for all of them. So, yeah, um, well, and then I, I don't want to take all the credit. Our EFs are wonderful. Okay, right? so like let's they, talk about that. They're the ones who execute the assessments. I kind of just help them along and kind of make sure everything's set in motion, but... Uh, we have a wonderful staff who works so well together, and it's not, I don't want to take all the credit. It's, it's a lot of people who work together to get it done. Come on, Karen, grab the glory while you can. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you're right, because I think the, an important word in your role is coordinator, right? You coordinate yeah. this, you support all of the EFs across our network with uh, with assessments, but you're not the one having to do it. You're, you're, you're teaching them, you're training them, you're supporting them in, in doing that with their learners, which I think is important because, you know, imagine if, if your child is in a homeschool program, they're, they're obviously very comfortable with mom or dad or whoever's rolling out the curriculum, and they get comfortable with their EF as well, develop a special bond yeah. with them. But then imagine a couple times a year, all of a sudden they have to go somewhere and take a test administered by someone they've never met before. That can be intimidating. That can induce anxiety. Sure. So it's important that someone that, that they know and, and, and knows cares about them is rolling this out. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I mentioned anxiety. You know, we all get testing anxiety. And, and I remember when I was in the classroom, my my students, my learners would, would stress out and, and they'd get nervous. And, and I would work really hard to, uh, to, to calm them down. Yeah. And, and you know, I'm not a I got to tell you I'm not a big fan of of testing our kids. I know what my kids n- know and need to learn and but it is important, right? I hear you. Why yeah, is absolutely. it that uh, so what talk to us about that? Why is it that that measuring academic growth is is so important if if it can be stressful for our kids and for our families? 
Um, why do we do it? Why is this something that's so important? Yeah, I think it's twofold. I think there are two kind of sides of the coin as to why it's helpful and why we do it, right? It's one side of the coin is to find learner strengths. We really want to find where their strengths are academically. We want to make sure that those learners are, those strengths aren't being forgotten. A lot of the times, like when learners are assessed in a traditional setting, um, the learners' weaknesses are the ones that kind of are focused on. And we kind of like let those strengths go go to the wayside. But we all know, we want to honor those strengths. We want to make sure that we know what those strengths are so that we can build them up and we can have them continually grow in those strengths. And the other side of the coin is to recognize their, their areas of need. Maybe they have areas of need where they need to work on, and we want to see growth in those areas of two. So it's really two sides of the coin looking at their strengths and their weaknesses and their needs. But also, like, as a school and as a program as a whole, we understand that testing is just one, really, one facet of a learner as a whole. Mm -hmm. And so this is a glance, just a sliver of what the learner is and who the learner is uh, as a whole child and as a whole learner. And so um, as a philosophy in general for our school, we don't, use assessments and testing for uh, to rank academic achievement. We don't use it for <laughs> grades. We, we okay. use it purely for growth, um, tracking, and management. We want to see, we want to make sure learners are growing wherever they are in their strengths and their weaknesses. And so um, I think a lot of the times parents might hear testing and assessment and think like, oh, they're trying to grade my learners. They want to put them on a certain scale. They want to mm-hmm. compare them to other students. But that's not the case for our program. Our program is really intentional and really uh, we really try to use our assessments for each individual learner to track their growth uh, for their benefit. Yeah, and and you know I've I've seen I've been there to witness the way y'all are using this data uh, to help inform families as to what their child is actually ready for, right? It's yeah. not just, yeah. oh, your child is high, mid, low. It's, okay, your child is ready to start pre-algebra. They're ready to get into those topics or they need remediation yeah. in this area. And families have seen that it really is a powerful tool for improving teaching and learning. It's so exciting. But yeah. it does, as I mentioned, it imp- it does induce you know jitters sometimes. Kids can get stressed out. We <laughs> we see families get stressed out around testing time. So do oh, yeah. you, do you have any ways that you help families or, or your EFs um, maybe calm those those nerves and 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 kind of ease a, a bit of those jitters as they come into testing? Yeah, we do. We have a lot of strategies. Uh, we have a lot of resources to help learners because we do know testing anxiety is real. Uh, and it occurs for a lot of learners, especially for learners who are particularly uh, used to home study, right? They're mm-hmm. not used to um, taking computerized assessments or, or that type of assessment on the computer, like an adaptive assessment is the sure. one that we use. Um, so we always say to our EFs and to communicate to our families, understanding the why, right? Understanding mm-hmm. the why helps so much in, in overcoming fears. And so just the relationship that the EFs make with their families is crucial to this so that there's trust and understanding as to why we're testing is to uh, really see what the, as you said, see what the learners are ready for, see where their strengths are, see where their weaknesses are. So understanding the why I think is a big thing. Um, Also, it's just being prepared. I think a lot of the times learners get a little bit of anxiety and fear because they don't know what the test is going to look like. They don't know what the environment's going to look like. They don't know how long it's going to take. There's just a lot of anticipation, especially in the home study program, if they don't know what's coming. And so really just preparing the students, giving them ample notice of when we're going to do the test, giving them sample questions, walking them through the test, walking them through all the maybe accommodations that they have, walking them through all the little buttons and choices that they have that they can that need, to, need to click. So all those things being prepared really helps ease some fears as well. And I think lastly, it's just really finding, helping your learners find their comfort Mm. In, the, in the testing process. And because it's a home study program, we have the benefit and the luxury of meeting le- learners in where their comfort is, right? Like we don't need yeah. to pull them out and put them in a new environment. We can let them comfort or test in the comfort of their home. We can ask them, what, how long do you want to take? Maybe do you want to break after 15 minutes, mm. 20 minutes? We can, we can ask them those things and really cater the testing experience to their comfort and to where their needs are. 
It's beautiful how you fully personalize every facet of your program at iLead Exploration. Karen Che with iLead Exploration joins me this morning. When we get back, we're going to talk a little bit more about her role with exploration and how you might be able to enroll your child with iLead Exploration, the most innovative home study program around. I am Matt Watson, and you're listening to SCVI and iLead School's Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS. No contract pest control. Did you hear that? Yes, Unipest has no contract, low impact, affordable and environmentally and family friendly pest control options with orange oil or other family friendly products. Whether it's ants, spiders, gophers, termites or bed bugs, Unipest Termite and Pest Control has an effective, eco-friendly option for you. Call Unipest today for a free orange oil inspection at 661-BUG-7575 or visit unipest.com. Healthcare can be difficult if you're underinsured or have Medi-Cal. Samuel Dixon Family Health Center can help. Services are available on a sliding fee schedule. The mission of the Samuel Dixon Family Health Center is to give the Santa Clarita Valley access to affordable, quality primary care. There are three locations to serve you, Canyon Country, Newhall, and Valverde. Go to sdfhc.org for more information and to find the location most convenient for you. It's painful when your teenager in your household is out of control. Out of control behavior is your teen's way of telling you something is wrong. Sometimes the reason for your teen's out of control behavior is so personal and tragic, your teen would never tell you or anyone else. Actions speak louder than words. Action Drug Rehab can help. With compassionate individual counseling, group sessions, and family support, Action Drug Rehab has been caring for thousands of Santa Clarita teens for decades. Visit actiondrugrehab.com. Get help now. Research shows that almost 80% of elderly adults want to remain in their homes for the long term. B-Style Home Care can help. They provide non-medical home care services, including medication reminders, light housekeeping, grocery shopping, and transportation to doctor's appointments. They can also provide respite relief for the primary caregiver or additional companionship for your loved one. B-Style caregivers are kind, considerate, and loving, helping to keep the dignity of the elderly or disabled client. B-Style Care is your best choice. Call 417-4414 or go online to bstylehomecare.com for more information. Your hometown station. KHTS is the only station I listen to. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Welcome back. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station. 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCVI and I lead school's Eye on the Valley. I am your host, Matt Watson, and we are talking this morning with Karen Che, the testing coordinator and educational facilitator with iLead Exploration, iLead's innovative homeschooling program. Karen, we talked all about uh, how amazing of a program exploration is and all the support that you provide your families we talked about your role as testing coordinator and uh, and how you support your learners with internal and external assessment how you use that data we've talked a lot uh, about all of that stuff but let's just kind of talk about the basics because I've, I've I've been telling our listeners if you think you can't yes you can so let's talk about um, you know who you serve what grades do you serve at I lead exploration because uh, I know a lot of homeschool programs are like just the elementary years and, and things like that and then what what grades does I lead exploration assess so what grades do you do you teach and and then who all gets tested yeah so our program is a full TK through 12 program. We have little ones from TK all the way up to graduating seniors uh, in high school. Um, and we assess all those learners. So we assess all those incoming TKers, traditional kindergartners, all the way up to those seniors in high school. We assess everybody um, at the beginning of the year and at the end of the year to see, to track their growth of that in academics. So... I'm, you know, I'm into the data and assessment and providing as much feedback as we can, but how does that work with a kid in TK, a kid who's four and a half years old? How, is that difficult to to test them? You would think that it is, but actually TK, the way that the test is made, it's so child friendly. A lot of the times the feedback that I get from parents and ES is that 
the younger kids, the TKers and the kindergartners, actually, actually, they love it because it's set up like a game for them on the computer. And it's, uh, it's really a lot of pictures, a lot of uh, uh, like just numbers and pictures and sequencing, those types of things where it makes it really interactive and fun. Um, <clears throat> And so the TK, the younger kids actually really love the assessments. They love yeah. the tests. And I'll get emails and I'll get texts from families and parents who, when their learners are done, right after they'll be like, I want to take another one. <laughs> they want to go on to the next one. They're like, there's not another one to take, but we'll look for something for you, you know, because they love it so much. And so um, it's really important to start young or, when, when, or whenever learners come into our program because uh, we want to continually track that growth. And what's great about being able to test learners starting from TK um, is to be able to track and see all the growth that they've had throughout the year. So we have learners who've been in our program from TK and graduate. We've had learners mm. who come in maybe for four years or yeah. maybe seven years. But throughout the time that they're in our program, because of this assessment, we're able to just see, visually see, like physically see on a, on a data chart the growth that they make while they're in our program. And it's really such a profound thing. Once learners are able to understand and see this data visually for themselves, it's really profound for them to see, like, wow, I've come so far. I've learned so much. I've done so much, yeah. right? Versus, like, the day-to-day that they do, the day-to-day curriculum that they complete every day. It's a trajectory that's really beautiful for all of our learners who are in our program for more than one year. Yeah, and then they don't take the, the state test, that really, like, high-stakes test at the end of the year until they hit third grade. And so by the time they get there, you know, they've been doing this a couple times a year, and, and, and this is, like, old hat for them. That's no problem, right? Exactly. Yeah. We're, we hope that, you know, by the time, because a lot of the time the state testing does create a lot more anxiety than our internal tests. And we really hope that we are able to make those younger years of assessment and testing a positive experience so that by the time they get to the third grade, um, they're comfortable with what they need to do for the state test. Yeah. And of course, we come around them and we support them and whatever <laughs> questions they have. We, we also have those times where we support them in that testing as well. Um, but yeah, that's our hope. Yeah, and you know, I keep mentioning it, right? But I, I just a conversation that continually rings in my head. I had a conversation with one of your families uh, about a year ago who said, you know, I thought about homeschooling because I have the time, but I just thought I'm not a teacher. I could never. I I would I I was afraid that I was going to shortchange my son, and then the yeah. pandemic hit, and mm-hmm. he was he was home, and she said he did so much better in school during the pandemic. I was afraid to send him back. And even though I was afraid to start homeschooling, I thought, you know, I really have to because it's what my my son needs. And as she got into it, she said, I I realized it's not that hard. I can do this. And she says, he's loving it, but I think I'm enjoying it more than than he does. So I, I can't help but think there's got to be a listener out there that's kind of turning the corner and going, all right, Matt, you talked me into it. I want a little bit more information. So where can listeners go if they want more information about iLead Exploration? Or, gosh, if, if, if we just knocked it out of the park today, Karen, and they're ready to enroll, where can they go if they're ready or if they've got a friend they want to recommend to the program? Yeah, so the first step would be to visit our website, iLeadExploration.org. Um, we have a ton of information on our website. You can click through all the little titles, see what our program is about. You can go through, see the different programs that we offer. See, you can look through the vendors, look at all the events that we have, look at the resources. There's, a, there's also a little section called, that's labeled enrollment. So if you're interested in enrolling or some, for some general information, you can click on that and it'll take you through the steps of enrollment there. Also, like I'd like to throw out my information too. If anybody has questions that like, feel free to email me at karen.chay at eyelidexploration.org. I 100% love talking about our program, love talking about home study, um, love answering all those questions. So my information is out there. It's on the webpage as well. Reach out to anybody. We all love talking about our program. (laughs) Gosh, what an amazing offer because that's not even your role at the school, but you you love being and want to be an ambassador for your program. So again, that's eyelidexploration.org or Karen Che. Karen dot Che forgot the dot forgot the dot Karen dot Che at iLeadExploration.org. Now I know you have an upcoming enrollment lottery, Karen. Can you tell us about what that lottery is? Is you know I I, I imagine like those those bingo bingo tumblers and and things like that. What is your enrollment lottery? That'd be great. Um, So (laughs) when when we start collecting enrollments for the fall, 
for the new school year, we, we, our charter, we use something called an enrollment lottery. Mm -hmm. And so if you go now onto our website and click that enrollment button and walk through the 2023-2024 enrollment process, it'll automatically put you into a lottery where we will choose from for our fall enrollment. So this is the lottery enrollment is to enter our program starting the next school year, which would start in August. And so what happens is the enrollment is open until March 27th. After March 27th, they pick a lottery date where they will go through <clears throat> all the people who have registered or clicked that enrollment button on our website and put their name on that enrollment list. And we'll, we pick learners through a lottery that way. And so if you have any interest in joining us in the fall, this would be the way to go. You go on our website, like Matt said, ileadexpiration.org, and click that enrollment button for 2023-2024. Fantastic. So what's the deadline to get the application in? I love the lottery, so it's not a first-come, first-serve kind of thing. You're not exclusionary yeah. where you're looking through applications and picking who you think would be best. It's you get in your application, and then it's it's chosen by lottery. But when do I have to have my application in by? March 27th would be the last day. Okay, so we've, we've got a little bit more than a month to, to think about this, but, y you know, I wouldn't wait. I would fill out the uh, the application if I were you, and then, yeah. you know, there's nothing that, that obligates you if you do get selected, but uh, it's important to, to get on that list now. So, again, by March 27th, ileadexploration.org, hit Enroll Now. Um, but here's the thing, Karen. You're enrolling now for next fall, and it's okay. only, you know, mid-January or mid-February right now. What about a family? Because I got a phone call just the other day from a family that mm -hmm. said, I want to enroll in your homeschool program, but I need, I need it like now. My son yeah. needs to move into a homeschool program now. I, is that possible? Can she enroll her son today? Yes, 100%. There's, if you go onto our website again, there's also the option to enroll for the 2022-2023 school year, which is this year. So you can definitely enroll now. We have spaces. We are open. Uh, we are accepting enrollments. Um, and so we, we, would love more, we would love families to join us in our program for this year throughout the rest of the school year. We have plenty of spaces. Fantastic. And, you know, one of the things that you mentioned in your previous uh, answer was, and we didn't really touch on this, educational funds. Can, can you talk for just a second about how that works? Because, you know, in a, in a brick and mortar school, the state allocates funding for the school to purchase textbooks and, and infrastructure yeah. and all the different educational materials that kids need. How does it work in a homeschool program? Yeah, so all of those things that a learner would need in a traditional brick-and-mortar school setting, they're going to need at home too, right? You're going to need right. those reading books. You're going to need that math book. You're going to need that notebook to write those math problems in. You're going to need <clears throat> reading books, novels, your novel studies, all those things learners are going to need as well at home. And so what our program offers are each semester, there's a certain amount of funds, so we call them educational funds, allocated to each fam or each learner, I should say. Um, if you are in a TK through eight, or actually if you are in uh, kindergarten through eight, you get uh, $1,400 each semester. High school, you get $1,500 um, to purchase anything needed for instructional use. So that means anything, instructional use is anything that you would use to basically instruct or teach your kids at home. Uh, textbooks, novels, uh, workbooks, uh, sometimes we have vendors that instruct learners outside the home, like a learning center or, or a tutoring center or um, special classes that they have at certain places. You know, so anything that would allow and give our learners instructional uh, time. And so as the year goes on, uh, because we're kind of a little bit late in the year, the instructional funds do get become less and less. Um, mm -hmm. If you want to enroll this year in our program, I would say do it soon because by the end of March, uh, for the rest of the school year, we do not offer any more funds just ah, because it's so late in the school year. Sure. Um, but we have also a curriculum library in Acton that is stocked full of curriculum and activities and all instruments and science, technology, all these things that we offer learners who might be short on instructional funds. <coughs> And so we have a, pl a plethora of resources to offer all new learners to come in. Um, it's really great. We have a ton of stuff. You, you really do have a ton of resources. And, and what I love about that is that it becomes a huge 
equity piece, right? Because there are families yeah. out there that would say, I'd love to homeschool my kid, but I can't afford to. Not true. Yeah. Not true. We're going to help you one way or another get everything you need to make sure that your kid gets a top quality education in an independent Absolutely. study, in a home study setting. Karen Che, testing coordinator and educational facilitator with iLead Exploration, iLead's innovative take on home study. I want to thank you so much for your time. Thanks for calling in. I know you've got a busy day and you've got a lot to thank do, but we do appreciate me. it. It is my pleasure, thank Karen. You. you take care. This is SCVI and iLead School's Eye on the Valley. I am Matt Watson, and this is your hometown station, KHTS. Uh, the fun has already started here on Big T's 5 Minutes of Fame. Welcome back. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCVI and I lead school's eye on the valley. I am your host, Matt Watson, and joining me in the studio is Engineer Andrew. How you doing, Good brother? morning. Great to be here. And we're super psyched because we've got a special cameo appearance by Engineer Matt this morning. Hello, hello. Matt, so glad to have you. Gosh, we... we Super excited. It is time for Big T's Five Minutes of Fame. Y'all know Big T. Big T is a longtime resident and leader in the Santa Clarita Valley. He's an executive and philanthropist. He's an amazing father, husband, and community leader. He also inspired the invention of artificial intelligence devices because, you know, brother man needs some help. Here he is, everybody. He's mom's favorite Big T. Welcome to the show. Well, good morning, Matthew, and uh, good morning to Mom, and a good morning to Shannon. Yes, and, and good morning, Nana and Papa. Yes. <laughs> so, like I said, we've got Engineer Matt, we've got Engineer Andrew. Um, so, because I'm also Matt, I, I will go by, what, Frogger, I guess? Um, Frogger works. So, so what we do, Matt, in, in case you forgot, you know, before you join the big time, uh, Big T's going to call out questions. We're going to hit our buzzers by calling out our names. Those of you playing along at home have an advantage. You don't have to hit your buzzer. Just shout out the answer. See if you can beat us. I don't think you will, though, because we're, the three of us are pretty good. Ooh, we'll see. We got some big hitters in there. <clears throat> yeah, we do. All righty, a little sports heavy, the, heavy this morning. So, okay. a fun fact about the Super Bowl. The... Notre Dame, Alabama, and Purdue have all produced three starting quarterbacks in the Super Bowl. There is one college, however, that has produced five starting quarterbacks. Can you quickly name it, Frogger? Uh, yeah, it's Cal. Cal Berkeley. <laughs> they produced Jared Goff, Joe Cap, Vince Ferragamo, Craig Morton, and Aaron Rodgers. Yep. Joe Cap, um, however, is a little bit different from uh, – Joe Cap is the only quarterback to start in the Super Bowl that ever played for a Santa Clarita high school. Oh, really? He played for Hart High School. There you go. There have been there have been three local high school players in Super Bowl history. One never got in, but Joe Cap obviously played. Shane Vereen played for the Patriots a couple of years back, had a couple of carries, and then Matt Moore was with the uh, Kansas City Chiefs last time they made it. Ah, there we go, there we go. Hey, yeah. Big T, I'm going to turn the tables today, and I've I've got a, a trivia question of my own, real tough one, gentlemen. Let's see how you do. Um, so. This year, uh, Devonta Smith, wide receiver for the Philadelphia Eagles, has the opportunity to become only the fourth in history, only the fourth player in history to have won a Heisman Trophy, a national title, and a Super Bowl. So college championship, Super Bowl championship, and Heisman Trophy. So that's wide receiver Devonta Smith with the Eagles has the chance to become only the fourth in history. Can any of you name the other three? No. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. You're I a big would, college football Herschel guy. Walker's, Herschel Walker's one of them, yes? Nope. He, he never won the Super Bowl. Mm. Okay, can you repeat the question? Please? Okay. That was a lot. <laughs> only three really players in history, history, only yeah. three players in history have won a Heisman Trophy, a college national title, and a Super Bowl. Okay. And um, here's a hint. None of them are quarterbacks. Okay. Oh, I vote. Give it to us, yeah, Roger. No. Yeah. All right, we got Charles Woodson, defensive back, yep. Marcus Allen, running back, and Tony Dorsett, running back. Never would have guessed. Not one. Nice. Yeah. nice. All right, let's uh, turn it back over to the pros. <laughs> on, on that note, Papa's pick, Philadelphia. Papa's taking the Eagles. There you go, Carl. Big T's picks, national anthem under, red Gatorade, and Jalen Hurts will score first. <laughs> Big T likes the props. All right. <laughs> I have Mahomes first. But. All right. All righty. Here we go. Which – which two teams have won the most Super Bowls with six each? Andrew. Matt. Frogger. Andrew. 
the Patriots and Steelers. Whoop, whoop. Andrew on the board, quick, nice. Who's performing this year's halftime show? Andrew. Andrew. Uh, I heard Andrew first. I heard Matt I first. heard Matt. Ooh, okay. Oh, Matt, Matt, Matt. Sorry, go ahead, Matt. Rihanna. Rihanna is correct. That answer brought to you by Ariana Monke from Remo Drums. <laughs> yes. Who who was the halftime performer that performed the best halftime Frogger. performance Andrew. ever? Frogger. <laughs> that would be Prince. Prince is correct. I mean, Purple Rain in, the, in rain, the rain. A little subjective. No. <laughs> no. No, it is true. Okay. That is a fact. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what, what famous jeweler makes the Lombardi Trophy? Oh. Matt. Matt. K jewelers. <laughs> <laughs> Every Super Bowl begins with K. Anybody else? Uh, Andrew, Tiffany. Tiffany's correct. Nice pull, Andrew. Uh, nice pull. You know, <laughs> the daughter of the designer of that trophy got a little uppity a couple years ago when Tom Brady was throwing it from boat to boat. Oh yeah, yes. she thought it was disrespectful. He completed the pass though. He did. Uh, He's he Tom Brady. To completed be fair, he was uh, drinking avocado. Speaking, tequila, speaking so. of Lombardi Trophy, who did Vince Lombardi coach for? Frogger. Frogger or Andrew? Sorry. No, it was Frogger. I'll give it All right. Cool. I'll give, I don't need your charity. Yes, I do. <laughs> Green Bay Packers. Green Bay Packers, correct. Who was the first left-handed quarterback to win a Super Bowl? Oh. Um, Frogger. Frogger. Bart Starr. Uh, no, he was right-handed. But I'll, I'll throw out a hint. Raiders. Ooh. Frogger. I, I'm off the board. No, I can't think of it right now. Ken Stabler. Yeah, the snake. The snake. Although the actual source is unknown, what is rumored to have started the great Chicago fire of the 1800s? Frogger. Frogger. Mrs. O'Leary's cow. (laughs) Mrs. O'Leary's cow. She knocked over a lantern. Just one of those (laughs) dumb things stuck up here in my head. Yep. What's the only king in a deck of cards without a mustache? Andrew. Andrew. The hearts? King of hearts, yes. Nice. You know, I had a 25% chance, you know? Off with his stash! <laughs> How many months have 28 days? Frogger. Andrew. Oh, come on. Frogger, this is you. <laughs> All of them. All of them. That's kind of like, what's what's Frogger's favorite appetizer at Super, Bu- Super Bowl? All, All of them. them. <laughs> what new product did Apple Computer launch with a $1.5 million commercial during the 1984 Super Bowl? Matt. Matt. The... Uh, the Macintosh. Macintosh is correct. Oh. <laughs> I thought he was going to go with I was, iWatch. I was going to say <laughs> MacBook, but yes, <laughs> Macintosh. Who invented jeans? Matt. Matt. Wrangler. It's correct. Oh, I know. Frogger. Oh. I know it. I know it. Frogger. Levi Strauss. Levi Strauss is correct. Yeah, Gold Rush, baby. What boxer famously said that he should be on a postage stamp? Matt. Because that's the. Go ahead. Muhammad Ali. Matt. Muhammad Ali is correct. That's the oh, only way he'd ever get licked. The greatest. That's the only way he'd ever get licked. That's a that's nice. that's dropping science right there. <laughs> <laughs> how many times? How many times did Ross get divorced on Friends? Frogger. Andrew. Frogger. Where was there was the, and the, I'm, I'm going twice. Incorrect, Andrew. <laughs> Three. Three is correct. What was the <laughs> what was the first motion picture to be shot out on an open ocean? Ooh, Andrew, Andrew, Titanic. Incorrect. No, Frogger. <laughs> Frogger. I'm going Little Mermaid. Incorrect. <sighs> Back Titanic. in the '70s, great. Matt, Matt, Planet of the Apes. <laughs> It's actually Jaws. Jaws. Oh, okay. <laughs> Planet of the Apes would be pretty cool, though. Well, parts of it, it are would be huh? ocean. Yeah. <laughs> what is the only Disney animated feature film that has a title character who doesn't speak? Frogger. Frogger. Andrew after mm-hmm. that. Um, I was going to say Little Mermaid, but then I think she talks later on. Oh. Oh, she, <laughs> yeah, yeah, she does. She sings. She does, huh? Andrew. Andrew. Um, was it Wally? Incorrect. Oh. Great guess. You got anything, Matt? Uh, no, I'm going to pass on this one. Dumbo. Uh, oh, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The soundtrack of which Disney animated feature includes seven Elvis Presley songs. Whoa. Disney animated feature Elvis. Oh, oh. oh come on. 
Frogger. Lilo and Stitch. Oh, Lilo and oh, Stitch. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. The whole thing. You yep. know, never seen it. <laughs> Producer Sarah's going to laugh at you guys on this one. What designer is best known for high-heeled shoes with red lacquered soles? Matt. Prada. <laughs> Incorrect. Oh! <laughs> Frogger. Frogger. Gucci. Incorrect. You got anything, Andrew? Uh, Valenciaga. <laughs> no. Oh. Christian Louboutin. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. What's the uh, world's most popular brand of ladies' boots? Frogger. Frogger. I live in Valencia, so i got to say Uggs. <laughs> that is correct. You'll see them at every swap meet. <laughs> yeah! In what country was the first fashion magazine published? Andrew. Frogger. Andrew. Uh, Italy? Uh, incorrect. I'm going France. France is correct. Uh, you. Birkenstocks are a brand of what? Frogger. Frogger. Sandals. Sandals is correct. Not that I know. Yeah. What 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 color were all Ferraris originally? Matt. Mm. Matt. Red. Red is correct. There you go. Vera Wang is best known for which type of dress? Frogger. Oh, I was going to say dress. Wedding dress. Wedding dress is correct. One more question, Big T. All righty. Uh, what superhero is referenced in every episode of Seinfeld? Frogger. Frogger. Superman. Superman. Don't waste my time. Killed it this morning, buddies. Killed it. All righty. We do have to wrap up, Big T. Let's not even bother to check that score. Y'all know who won. Big T, we want to thank you for swinging by. Thank you thank you to our guests, Ariana Monge with Remo Drums, Karen Che, educator with I Lead Exploration, producer Sarah, engineer Matt, engineer Andrew, Big T, and thank you for listening to the show. Life is hard, but we're all here to help each other along. Be well, do good, enjoy the game, join us next Friday, and every Friday, 8 to 10 a.m., I am Matt Watson, and this is SCVI and I Lead School's Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS.